Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. So we left off with Harry being in Dumbledore's office and Dumbledore just asked Harry if he had anything at all that he needed to tell him and Harry had just said, nope, there isn't anything, Professor. So I'm curious, I'm curious why Harry isn't telling Dumbledore what's going on. Maybe we'll find out today. The double attack on Justin and nearly headless Nick turned into what hitherto been nervous in a real panic. Sorry, had, had, blah, blah, blah. The double attack on Justin and nearly headless Nick turned into what had hitherto been nervousness into a real panic. Curiously, it was nearly headless Nick's fate that seemed to worry most people. What could possibly do that to a ghost? People asked each other. What terrible power could harm someone who's already dead? There was almost a stampede to book seats on the Hogwarts Express so that students could go home for Christmas. At this rate, we'll be the only ones left, Ron told Harry and Hermione. Us, Malfoy, Crabbe and Goyle. What a jolly holiday it's going to be. Crabbe and Goyle, who always did what Malfoy said, or who always did what, whatever Malfoy did, had signed up to stay over the holidays too. But Harry was glad that most people were leaving. He was tired of people skirting around him in the corridors, as though he was about to sprout fangs or spit poison. Tired of all the muttering, pointing, and hissing as he passed. Fred and George, however, found all this very funny. They went out of their way to march ahead of Harry down the corridors, shouting, Make way for the heir of Slytherin! Seriously evil wizard coming through! Percy was deeply disapproving of this behavior. It is not a laughing matter, he said coldly. Oh, get out of the way, Percy, said Fred. Harry's in a hurry. Yeah, he's nipping off the Chamber of Secrets for a cup of tea with his fanged servant, said George, chortling. Ginny didn't find it amusing either. Oh, don't, she wailed every time Fred asked Harry loudly who he was planning to attack next. Or George pretended to ward off Harry with a large clove of garlic when they met. Harry didn't mind. It made him feel better that Fred and George, at least, thought that the idea of him being Slytherin's heir was quite ludicrous. But their antics seemed to be aggravating Draco Malfoy, who looked increasingly sour each time he saw them at it. It's because he's bursting to say it's really him, said Ron knowingly. You know, he hates everyone beating him at anything, and you're going to get all the credit for his dirty work. Not for long, said Hermione in a satisfied tone. The polyjuice potion is nearly ready. We'll be getting the truth out of him any day now. At last, the term ended, and a silence deep as the snow on the grounds descended upon the castle. Harry found it peaceful rather than gloomy and enjoyed the fact that he, Hermione, and the Weasleys had run up the Gryffindor Tower, which meant that they could play Exploding Snap loudly without bothering anyone and practice dueling in private. Fred, George, and Ginny had chosen to stay at school rather than visit Bill in Egypt with Mr. and Mrs. Weasley. Percy, who disapproved what he termed their childish behavior, didn't spend much time in Gryffindor's common room. He had already told them pompously that he was staying over Christmas because it was his duty as a prefect to support the teachers during this troubled time. Christmas morning dawned, cold and white. Harry and Ron, the only ones left in their dormitory, were woken very early by Hermione, who burst in, fully dressed and carrying presents for them both. Wake up, she said loudly, pulling back the curtains at the window. Hermione? You're not supposed to be in here, said Ron, shielding his eyes against the light. Merry Christmas to you, too, said Hermione, throwing him his present. I've been up for nearly an hour, adding more lace wings to the potion. It's ready. Harry sat up, suddenly wide awake. Are you sure? Positive, said Hermione, shifting Scabbers the rat so that she could sit down on the end of his four-poster. If we're going to do it, I say it should be tonight. At that moment, Hedwig swooped into the room, carrying a very small package in her beak. Hello, said Harry happily, as she landed on his bed. 
Are you speaking to me again? She nibbled his ear in an affectionate sort of way, which was far better, which was a far better present than the one which she brought him, which turned out to be from the Dursleys. They had sent Harry a toothpick and a note telling him to find out whether he'd be able to stay at Hogwarts for the summer holidays, too. The rest of Harry's Christmas presents were far more satisfactory. Hagrid had sent him a large tin of, oh, I can't remember, was it treacle or I, maybe it was treacle fudge. I can't remember. I looked it up. Which Harry had decided to soften by the fire before eating. Ron had given him a book called Flying with the Cannons, a book of interesting facts about his favorite Quidditch team. And Hermione had bought him a luxury eagle feather quill. Harry opened the last present to find a new hand-knitted jumper from Mrs. Weasley and a large plum cake. He put her card with a fresh, with a fresh surge of guilt thinking about Mr. Weasley's car, car, which hadn't since been in its, wow, I am tripping over my words. He put her card with a fresh surge of guilt, thinking about Mr. Weasley's car, which hadn't been seen since its crash with the Whomping Willow and the bout of rule breaking he and Ron were planning next. No one, not even someone dreading to take the polyjuice potion later could fail to enjoy a Christmas dinner at Hogwarts. The great hall looked magnificent. Not only were there a, do were there a dozen frost-covered Christmas trees and thick streamers of holly and mistletoe crisscrossing the ceiling, but enchanted snow was falling, warm and dry from the ceiling. Dumbledore led them in a few of his favorite carols, Hagrid booming more and more loudly with every goblet of eggnog he consumed. Percy, who hadn't noticed that Fred had bewitched his prefect badge so that it now read pinhead kept asking them all why they were, what they were snickering at harry didn't even care that draco malfoy was making loud snide remarks about his new jumper from the slytherin table with a bit of luck malfoy would be getting his comeuppance in a few hours time harry and ron had barely finished their third helpings of christmas pudding when hermione ushered them out of the hall to finalize their plans for the evening we still need a bit of the people you're changing into, said Hermione, matter-of-factly, as though she was sending them to the supermarket for washing power, powder. And obviously, it'll be best if you can get something of Crab and Goyles. They're Malfoy's best friends. He'll tell them anything. And we also need to make sure the real cra Crab and Goyle can't burst in on us while we're interrogating him. I've got it all worked out, she went on smoothly, ignoring Harry and Ron's stupefied faces. She held up two plump chocolate cakes. I've filled these with simple sleeping draft. All you have to do is make sure Crab and Goya find them. You know how greedy they are. They're bound to eat them. Once they're asleep, pull out a few of their hairs and hide them in a broom cupboard. Harry and Ron looked incredulously at each other. Hermione, I don't think... That could go seriously wrong. But Hermione had a steely glint in her eye, not unlike the one Professor McGonagall sometimes had. The potion will be useless without Crab and Goyle's hair, she said sternly. You do want to investigate Malfoy, don't you? Oh, all right, said Harry. Oops, I lost my spot. Oh, all right, all right, said Harry. But what about you? Whose hair are you ripping out? I've already got mine, said Hermione brightly, pulling a tiny bottle out of her pocket and showing them the single hair inside. Remember Millicent Bulstrode wrestling with me at the dueling club? She left this on my robes when she was trying to strangle me. And she's gone home for Christmas, so I'll just have to tell the Slytherins why I've decided to come back. When Hermione had bustled off to check the polyjuice potion again, Ron turned to Harry with a doom-laden expression. Have you ever heard of a plan where so many things could go wrong? And that is unfortunately our time where we have to stop today because we're almost at 10 minutes. Eee, love a good cliffhanger. Happy Tuesday.